Ancient yoga talks about three bodies which we have which include physical, astral and causal. I thought diving deep into the astral body can bring an eastern perspective to the several dream episodes that I have already done. In today's episode we answer three key questions. What is the astral body? What are the three types of sleep? What is the role of the astral body in sleep and dreams? Ayurvedic practitioner and Ayurveda yoga therapist Myra Lewin is a professional member of the National Ayurvedic Medical Association and a master yogini. Myra has amassed more than 100,000 hours of yoga teaching experience over 30 years. In 1999, she founded Hale Pulle Ayurveda and Yoga. She is the author of several acclaimed books on Ayurvedic nourishment. Myra is also the host of two remarkable podcasts on holistic healing, Everyday Ayurveda and Yoga at Hale Pulle and Spark Your Intuition. Do excuse the noise in the background. Let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Deepa, Light Functional Medicine Practitioner, author and yogini and you're listening to the Sleep Whisperer podcast, the only sleep podcast with conversations and meditations. I'm on a mission to share profoundly insightful sleep conversations with global visionaries that merge together functional medicine and ancient wisdom. Breathe in bliss through weekly guided meditations and let yourself enter the land of dreams. Together, let's unravel the pieces, get to the roots and understand the right tools to transform your sleep completely. Through this podcast, I want you to dream the best version of yourself. It's time to regain hope and begin your sleep journey. Welcome back to the Sleep Whisperer podcast, Myra. We had you on an earlier episode where you took us through your personal journey and Adhinacharya. And today we are speaking about something which probably is a very new concept to many people, which is the astral body and sleep. And I must admit, when um, we decided to speak about this, I was pretty fascinated to explore this and it's something so new on the show. Uh, Maybe we can talk first about what has been your own experience working with energetics and then we can talk about the astral body because these are subtle concepts and I'm sure it's extremely new for many listeners. Yes, yes. Well, thanks for having me back and such a great topic. Uh, My experience uh, working with energy, mm. you, uh, that you, and my my father, I'll just say, was a nuclear scientist. He in the early days of that, and and so we talked about energy. We talked about it in my home, but and and also and particularly about how you couldn't see the energy that went through the electrical wires, right? But it worked, so we know it was there, and that was one of the things that I needed to prove it to me. And then, uh, and then uh, I came to a point uh, after when I was just came came to yoga and I started learning about it. And, there, and there, you were talking about the unseen, you know that and and that and so the unseen, you know, sounded like something real mysterious or something scary or something like that, you know. And then to realize it's like, well, no. And then the first time somebody said, okay take your two hands and everybody could do this. Just give them a couple of rubs and then hold them about a half a meter apart and then slowly start to move your palms toward each other. And that's our energy. That's us. Yeah, we might feel pressure or tingling or heat or cold or whatever. So just recognizing that, that oh yes, the body is, is made up of energy yeah and and uh and so we have this we'll say unseen part of ourselves and so uh, i started learning about that 
quite extensively in the in the late 1980s and and then um, and quite intensely actually in the early 90s uh, because it again it helped me to to resolve a lot of things for myself the more I came to understand my energy and we we've been talking about sleep and uh, <laughs> I I the little sleep that I used to have I had a lot of action going on. And, and that, and so uh, some of the sometimes I think that there were times where I wouldn't want to go to sleep be, until I got exhausted and literally just passed out, so that I wouldn't experience things uh, in what we call the dream state or on another plane, and uh, and and it comes back to it's very important for us as human beings to live a full life. And if we're afraid of something that's a very much a part of our life, well, this is the, the, that makes it very difficult and it doesn't need to be that difficult. And that's, that's, that's what I was taught and shown uh, you know, early on, uh, which has made a big difference in my life. What is the astral body? Because I know that for many people, probably those in yoga will have a con understanding of the concept of an astral body, but for many, it might be something very new. What is the astral body? And I'm sure that if I asked a few people, they would say, no, I don't know what that is. So maybe if you could just talk about what is the astral body? Do we all have an astral body? And how does the astral body work? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give an attempt to explain it. <laughs> it's one of those things that the astral body is our energy body. Yeah, you know, we call it sometimes the subtle body. Sometimes we call it the spiritual body. And and it's so it's the more subtle aspect of us, right? So I guess a, a kind of an easy way to think about it would be, you know, how you go through life and you're doing things, and you have some reasonable degree of confidence in what you're doing, and that, and then something happens and someone hurts your feelings. Yeah, and that feels that that feeling can be so strong but subtle, right? There's nothing necessarily physical about it, right? And so that's another level of it. But the astral body is when we go to sleep, then we go we go out of the body in order to give it a rest. That's part of it. And then the other part of it is is that there's this other level of subtle existence going on. And we're there, uh, again, to give the body and the mind a rest. But what ends up happening too, is that we're also there sometimes uh, working out our karma. And the thing is that everything, this is an important point in Ayurveda, everything that we expose our five senses to it, is, it makes an impression in us. And if we're able to resolve that in our heart and mind, then it's, it's, it's just part of our experience and then it's no big deal. But when we're not able to resolve it for ourselves, then in other words, for example, we're taking on somebody else's uh, opinion about something and it's not really ours, then we carry it. And that's the kind of thing that we will try to resolve on the astral, which of course then disturbs our sleep. But another example is when you watch it, if you watch a movie that has violence or you watch a movie of a horror movie or whatever that makes up all kinds of things, those are things that make an impression. So those impressions are there. And so, again, we will try to resolve those on the astral, disturbing our sleep. Yeah. And the, because we have enough experiences in life, right? You know, we have some positive ones. We have some not so positive ones. And, and so uh, this is where we really want to pay attention to what we expose ourselves to because it makes a huge difference. So the astral body is, is a part of us. It's, it's our subtle energy. We stay connected to the body as long as we stay alive, but at sleep, we go out part way. 
And so all of us do have an astral body and that's what you're sharing with us. Even if that's perhaps right. somebody is not particularly so in tune with themselves, it is part of them. And uh, you described some beautiful examples, Myra, because when you spoke about how somebody hurts us and it stays with us on a deep level, I mean, these are aspects that all of us are witnessing on a day-to-day -day basis. Before we go further, could you perhaps share a way that we can resolve something like that? Because obviously, I know probably we'll come to our takeaways at the end, but uh, I'm assuming we can do something about not watching violent content. I totally agree with you there because I've had to ask people who have sleep challenges as to what do they watch through the day or late in the evening. And most of the shows are very high adrenaline, heart racing kind of uh, content. And then it's very difficult to calm down after that. And uh, but I mean, we don't. What can we really do about somebody else hurting us? Because it's we we can't. I mean, of course, you may have something to say about we can choose to not be hurt, but it's easier said than done for a lot of us. If you could just speak a little bit into that, because I think it's really important in the context of all of us. Uh huh. Yeah. You, um. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, yes, you've heard me say that that when someone does something or says something, it's coming from them. How I receive it is my choice. But when I have an impression or a memory from the past of a hurt, for example, that I'm holding on to, that person could do something and it goes and it just hits that memory. And then it, it becomes current for us, even though it could have happened 20 years ago. And when that happens, then it's now it's alive and present in my, my energy body, and in my life now. And so this is why it is this is just to give you another example of why it's so important what we expose ourselves to. Now, the other thing too, is that I have to put this in here. And that is that children are even that much more impressionable and what and letting them be exposed to things that are really not helpful for them for extreme things that they don't even know how to make a choice about this is really really important not to do because what's happening then 30 years later you know they're experiencing that because they didn't know what to do with it and that's a lot of what happens when we get hurt And as children, and we make decisions about it. And so we hold that energy that way. Yeah. And so there are tools and things that you can learn. Talk therapy is one thing, but there are other tools, energetic tools that are easier to use that allow us to start to resolve and, and, uh, and you could say complete some of that so that we don't have to carry it around. And, uh, and so that's, but, but it can feel extremely powerful. Right. It feels it can be feels like it can just freeze you in life. Uh, but if we remember that it's just energy and it's not actually who we are, it's that impression I'm carrying, then then we can start to get a little bit of distance from it. And then that's how we can take steps to resolve those things. I mean, it just sounds so much easier when you say it than actually practicing it, especially if somebody were to be in a situation where on a day-to-day -day basis they experience something like that, where somebody's hurtful, or, and then it just gets harder and harder to cope with that. But um, I would like us, before we come to how can we work through clearing up our energy, talk a little bit about types of sleep, three types of sleep, what's our astral body doing when we are sleeping. You, had, you did say that we leave and we go out. and uh, But what is the astral body doing when we dream, for example? Yes, we can control what we get in terms of inputs from outside, what we watch or not watch. Um, but um, what is, what's happening in our dream states? 
Well, I can I can speak to in from the from yoga. We talk about three stages of consciousness, and that is our waking, right? And I was just talking about that. That was what that's what happens when we're awake. But there's still our energy body is still active at that point. Uh, and then we have dream our sleep when we dream, right? And this is also astral body, very active. And then there's there's deep sleep. And this is when it goes quiet. And that and that's uh, yeah, I think in modern science, you know, they talk about the different types of sleep in that way. And it's somewhat, it's pretty much the same as that, except that that we start to recognize the kinds of things that actually impact that. So when we look at look at it from the standpoint of yoga and Ayurveda, then we recognize that in our waking state and in our dream state, what makes the difference is my level of consciousness and what I'm doing and, and what's happening to me. And those are, those are things that we develop over time. And that's what the practices of yoga are about, to, to be able to, to recognize what's now and what is, what is from my past impressions. We call them samskara in, in, uh, in Sanskrit. And so those past impressions, uh, they are things that we're meant to resolve. When I say resolve, you know, you could think of it as it's a healing, right? If you could imagine in your life, you know, there's probably things that happened early in your life that have now resolved for you, you know, that they're no longer a big deal. And, and this is what happens. So when, what happens then though, if I'm not doing that on a day-to-day -day basis in my life, then I'm going to be doing a whole lot of it during my sleep, which means I'm going to be trying to working heavily on the astral and I'm not going to go into deep sleep and I'm going to wake up feeling, uh, oh, feeling like I worked all night. Mm, <laughs> very important differentiation. I was just going to ask you that. And you also just spoke about how if we don't deal with what's happened outside. So, could you talk a little bit about how trauma impacts the astral body? Because there's so much trauma people go through and somehow that seems to be at the root of all illness, including sleep challenges. And um, it's, it's something that I've had the most, uh, the pe people who really quite who've done a lot of work on themselves and still talk about how, these old traumas come up over and over again. So does trauma have impact on the astral body itself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the traumas do. You know, these are these are impressions, right? So, uh, and I actually, at first, I wasn't sure if you'd said drama or trauma, but actually it's the same for both. So, <laughs> and the, and there, there is an element where we, well, this takes us to something a little bit deeper, which is that in order to resolve these things, there is a level of acceptance that we have to come to, no matter what it is. And there's acceptance and forgiveness. Sometimes we have to forgive somebody else. Sometimes we have to forgive the government. Sometimes, and then we need to forgive ourselves or whatever, you see. And so acceptance and forgiveness, acceptance doesn't mean I agree. Acceptance means that I see what it is, you know, that I'm willing to look at the whole picture. I see what it is. I accept that that's how it is. And now what am I going to do? How am I going to respond? And so, and the thing is, is that we don't respond well if we don't have good acceptance and we don't have some forgiveness. You know? So, and the thing is, is that when we don't accept or forgive, it hurts us. You know, it may hurt a relationship too, but it hurts us. And, you know, that, that doesn't help anything, right? That the, when it, each of us is the one is responsible for our lives. Yeah, so, so those are, so those are the things and, 
mm, those things might look sound a little bit a little bit difficult in that sometimes it is because as human beings we become very attached to things but also as human beings we're able to we're able to let go eventually and, and when we can take a look at the energy body or the the astral body then this gives us a whole another dimension to recognize what's going on with ourselves and we come to know ourselves better and you did make a very key point through this episode Myra, which is that if we don't try and resolve whatever we go through in our life then it's the astral body i mean it, we do a lot of work in our sleep then we don't really wake up feeling as refreshed we feel like we've done work in our sleep and so we don't have that time for repair but can we do anything to clear up these things, some practices that we can do so that we don't have to have this stressful situation in sleep or stressful dreams where we're allowing the subconscious to do our job, which we should have done through the day. And then it feels burdened at trying to resolve things through that space of sleep. Mm -hmm. There, there are, we work with uh, something called the intuitive energy practice where we, we actually work directly with the energy and from a place of, of neutrality as, as well as possible. And, uh, and, and that it's sort of like uh, giving yourself a little head start. And then the, the mind sometimes will then want to go to the old way and then, but you have that sense, this is, this is what's underneath. And so the foundation changes. And so we can do do a, do a little meditation, yeah. Yeah, it would be helpful if you took us through a short uh, way of clearing our energy. So when when those old memories are awakened in us, we're no longer in the present. You know, we're, we've we've stepped back in time into the time of that memory, and so by removing the charge it takes them away from our being right here in our aura. And it's, it's, we're putting them in the archives. You know, we're gonna put them in storage. We can pull them up if we need it, but they're not pr part of our present life anymore. Yeah. So that's what can come from that. That was beautiful, Myra. I think that was the best part of today. Um, okay. Would you like to just, leave us with any final words in the context of what we spoke today. Yes, I think it's very important to just to start to notice energy. Just start to notice things. It's, it to, it's to validate it for yourself uh, that things don't have to be just physical, that actually everything physical is energy. And so when you look at a tree or some plants, you know, to see, you know, what is, what does the energy feel like in that? And then that'll help you start to feel yourself in more expanded ways. And sometimes we habituate only feeling the bad stuff. Uh, and, 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 that. and so we need to let ourselves have a full range. We get to have the good stuff too. And then sometimes there'll be that stuff that's not as good but that's okay. Well, we don't have to get stuck there. Thank you, Myra. And again, once again, just to remind people where can people have access to you, your work. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We all, our website is halepule, H-A-L-E-P-U-L-E.com. And we offer there, actually, we offer energetic healings for when you feel like you get really stuck on something. And then if you want to learn more about uh, those tools, you can go to the Spark Your Intuition podcast. And, there's, and if you do that, you want to start at the oldest one and work forward. Thanks again, Myra. It was a pleasure having you today. Much appreciated. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. You can go to the next episode, episode 180 for the intuitive energy practice to clear your energy. 
there are several guided practices on the show scroll down looking for guided meditation it is always best to lie on the floor on a mat wear an eye mask and use an earpiece to listen for the very best effect and results have a great day This podcast is intended to provide helpful and informative material on the subject matter covered in the episodes. The podcast is not acting in the capacity of a doctor or a registered dietitian and is not rendering any professional healthcare or medical service. The information in the podcast is not intended as a substitute for medical advice or services or as treatment or cure for any particular health condition. The advice and tools contained herein may not be suitable for your situation. Any medical questions regarding contraindications and cautions or any questions on whether or not to proceed with any practices provided in the show should be referred to qualified health professionals before adopting the same the podcast specifically disclaims any responsibility for any liability loss risk personal or otherwise which may be incurred as a direct or indirect consequence of the use of information from this podcast or the application adoption of any of the information provided